Welcome to Learn and Love Music. I'm Dwayne Hulbert. This week I'm going to look at five different preludes written by Frederick Chopin. He wrote a set of 24 of them. He wrote them in Mallorca off the coast of France with his lover Georges Sand and he had a lot of inspiration in writing this piece based on his surroundings on this, this sort of desolate island. first one I'm going to do, it has a very fast, this is number three, it has a very fast left hand. And the melodic line sort of floats above that. This is what you'll hear in all five of these examples. Here's the G major prelude. Listen for the left hand background and then the melody that sort of climbs up out of that. through each one of these you'll notice that this is a pattern that he uses. There's one line that is the melody and the other is the accompaniment. In the next one I'm going to play, this is number four, also a very popular one, it has a dreary left hand line. These slow chords. But the beauty is when he puts this plaintive line above it. This is what it sounds like together. This is number four in E minor. Chopin supposedly named all of these pieces and he had all of the names, the, the, the suggestions about what the names would be, and I think he left them to his, his lover, Georges Sand, and she somehow lost them. And so we don't really know what Chopin had in mind. However, Hans von Bülow was a pianist, and he came up with his own set of 24 different stories to these 24 pieces. And he gave a title to each one of them. This one, Hans von Bülow called Suffocation. And you can hear how the, the sound is really, really dreary, almost like the landscape they were living in at that time on Mallorca. But it's quite beautiful the way the harmony changes in the left hand and how simple the right hand is against it. One of these five pieces that I'm going to present has this one thing in common, that definition between accompaniment and melody. In this case, the melody is plaintive and beautiful, the accompaniment is rather dreary and slow and chords. Here's another one that's similar to number four in E minor, and that is number six in B minor. It has a beautiful cello-like line in the left hand. So the melody has been switched from the top to the bottom in this one. And so the melody is this, left hand. And against it, a very, very simple accompaniment. And you put the two together and is hauntingly beautiful. The next piece I chose was the A major prelude. This is probably the most famous of them. Many young students play this piece. It's only two lines long, but it is so beautiful. And it's a waltz. It's in 3-4 time, marked Andantino. And in this piece, 
the title that was given by von Bülow was, he wrote the words Polish dancer on it. So I assume it was a woman dancer, but I wasn't not sure about that. But it has this waltz-like feeling, but the waltz has a hesitancy to it. And it gives it sort of this thoughtfulness that is really quite compelling. Listen to this Andantino, very, very famous piece, and a beautiful piece. It has this stop and go rhythm in three, four time, of course, in a waltz. prelude I'll be playing is the one that is in D flat major. It's number 15. This also, like the A major we just heard, is probably the second most popular piece. And this piece was given the name the Raindrop Prelude by Hans van Bülow. This name for the piece has carried on for hundreds of years, 200 years or more, and pianists always say, oh, why can I play the raindrop prelude? And I guess the question would be, what is the raindrop prelude? What makes it a, the sound like raindrops? Well, as we look at the accompaniment, we've been looking at accompaniment and melody in this session. So here you'll hear repeated notes in the left hand. And the note that's repeated the most is the A flat. So you hear this A flat over and over again. through the whole prelude, but we put this beautiful falling melody above it. And a little bit of a technical note here, when you're playing this piece, sometimes the right hand has to give way to the left hand and they have to switch around with the accompaniments You'll notice that sometimes my right hand, left hand will come above my right hand, and you put it all together, those the accompaniment and the melody, and it's this familiar prelude. <laughs> The raindrops are the A flats in the left hand. Those notes continue all the way through the first section of the piece, and then we have a B section in the middle, but it does return at the end, that same raindrop. Here's the raindrop passage toward the end of the piece. the opening section. Now, in the middle section, you'll find that the same note is heard for the raindrops in the middle section, but in this case he switches keys. We were in the key of D flat, and he changes it to sharps. So now instead of D flat, we're in C sharp minor. So it has the same key more or less, but it's in a minor key. So now we hear the raindrops, but in sort of a darker kind of mood. Listen to the raindrops in the middle section. number of A flats and G sharps in this piece and there were just short of 300 in this little piece it's only about three and a half or four minutes long but he uses that he just pounds it down almost as if he's sitting there in his 
uh, in his little house in Mallorca, and the rain just keeps coming down. You can see that was probably the, the inspiration for this piece. But it is a marvelous work in a very dark and dreary way. I, most pian young pianists learn this piece, and it's, it's something that is almost magical. So I've given you some things to listen for in these five preludes by Frédéric Chopin. Make sure you check out our companion video where I'll be playing all five of these pieces in their entirety. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. We want to see you back again. And we hope you've enjoyed this episode of Learn and Love Music with Chopin Preludes.